The 2022 GM meetings happening right now in Vegas, but of course the focus is on 2023 and beyond. But what I think is really cool about the GM meetings is sort of getting a behind the scenes peek into what you do every single day and, and helping fans understand the challenges of your job day in and day out. So let's just start at the GM meetings. How do the conversations you have here set you up for the rest of the season? Yeah. So with teams, um, normally um, people start making phone calls like a couple weeks ago and um, just setting, hey, what do you need? What are you looking for? Um, and then you kind of figure out what conversations you need to have here. So you kind of go into this week and say, okay, here are the agents I need to meet with, but here are the teams that I think we, we match up well with. And then you sort of start the, that process of, you know, do, do your needs match up and, and starting to talk about those kind of trades. And, and it's a little bit different than the trade deadline. Everyone knows there's going to be trades. In the winter, there may or may not be, and trying to figure out which teams want to trade or which teams just want to sign free agents is, is really valuable. So let's say that you have a player on the trade block that you want to move. How do you begin conversations with another team? Yeah. Well, there's always like the, um, the coyness or strategy part of it, right? That if you, if you did want to move a player, you would, you know, sometimes teams put, just put them on the block, but other times you, you might want to like set it up so they ask, they, you know, they ask for that player. Um, and that way you're not pushing them out there, they're actually asking. And so there's always that, that interplay of, um, of a negotiation where I think sometimes you, you put that player on the market and sometimes you want to make sure that other, the team asks you about that player. There's certainly a strategy behind it. Who did you learn the most from when, when dealing with that aspect yeah. of it? So, I mean, obviously Theo, um, just we did so many different deals together and we talked through so many different strategies and how do you, do you get to this result. I also learned a lot when I was in San Diego um, the owner of the, of the Padres was a former agent, uh, Jeff Morad, and I learned more about negotiating in those two years than really any other time in my career because you know, he had done it for a living on the other side, and he really sort of took me under his wing and, and gave me a ton of tips and would say, hey, this is what he's thinking right now. You have to realize that, and um, things I had never thought of on the other side. And so I really learned so much in that two years by having a a former agent as an owner. Is there an element of that too, of wanting to maintain certain relationships of like, we want to make sure both teams in a way benefit from a certain deal. Is that part of the thought process? Yeah, I mean, clearly you want to be, what, what you get in return in a deal, you want to work out really well. Right. Um, but you you don't want to fleece the other team. You, you don't want to have it be one-sided. You want that trade to work out both ways because that does increase the, the likelihood that you're going to do a deal with that team later on. And I've had situations where you, know, you felt like, uh, for whatever reason, you got the better of a trade and, and that team might be reluctant to deal with you later on, whether because you know, they don't want to get burned twice or whatever. And so I think it's really important that both teams get what they want. And that is the essence of a trade. I mean, they should be getting something they want too. And sometimes things don't work out for them. Sometimes things don't work out for you, but you want it to, you know, Go, you want to go into the process you know, uh, hoping that both teams get what they want because that way you'll, you'll probably do another deal down the road. And it's a really small industry. You know, um, I know how certain other GMs act, what, how they'll, you know, during trades, and they have a scouting report on me as well. And you realize it's a small industry, so you, have, you, you realize that you, um, you're going to see these people a lot, you're going to deal with them a lot, and um, I think how you comport yourself during the negotiation is really important because you're gonna do this over and over with these same people. Is there a trade you look back in your career and think, wow, I'm really proud of that trade? Yeah, I think that the deal that I'm probably most proud of that I did with the Cubs, um, I would say was the Arietta yeah. deal. Right away in that deal, it was clear that we could make the Feldman for Arietta deal part of it. But I really wanted to get Pedro Strope in that deal. And I kept holding out and holding out to get Strope in that deal. And looking back, it was pretty risky because I could have let Arietta go in trying to get Strope. But, but we ended up putting Steve Clevenger in the deal. They put Strope in the deal. And so instead of a deal that could have happened in a couple of days, it took several weeks to get that deal done. But as great as Jake was, and the, I mean, we don't have 2015 and 16 without Jake, but I also think people, um, probably underestimate the value of Pedro Strope. I mean, really, he was a, a, a critical reliever for us for, I think, six years. 
And I was really glad that I held out in that negotiation to get him. And, and that, that trade could not have worked out better for us. Interesting stuff. Thank you so much for the time, Jed Hoyer, Cubs president of baseball operations. Super insightful when we check in with him at the 2022 GM meetings.